Hi everyone, it's Holly and I thought I would do like a cooking video today and I'm in a hurry because I'm watching Survivor so I'm just filming this in between or during commercial breaks. So what I'm making today is what we call in my family Disney potatoes. I guess technically according to the recipe I have they're called mashed red skin and sweet potatoes which is accurate but my <laughs> description is better. Um, so these are served at 1900 Park Fair in the Grand Floridian at Disney World, but my family, um, like my dad's family, we eat them at pretty much every family gathering, uh, and for a long time my dad's been the one making them, and then I started making them for work. Once a month we have a food day, and I started making these, so when my family found out, they decided to have a potato cook-off, and so my dad and I both made a batch of potatoes and there was a blind taste test and whoever won had to make the potatoes every time <laughs> I don't know well because my dad also makes regular cream potatoes so it's kind of a lot for him to do both um, but I ended up winning so I'm making them and this is actually the night before Thanksgiving so I'm making these for Thanksgiving tomorrow normally for my family I would make a double batch but since he's also making creamed potatoes that's kind of unnecessary I just make a single batch and it's actually a really easy recipe. People always think it's so much more complicated than it is. Five ingredients. You need 12 sticks of butter, or 12 sticks, 12 tablespoons of butter, which I use more than that now in retrospect. Um, I'll probably end up using two sticks, which is um, 16 tablespoons. Um, we'll see. I feel like a lot of this is, despite the fact having measurements, it's kind of hard to really know, so you just have to like guesstimate. And then you want, for one batch, two and a half pounds of red skin potatoes, and you'll want three quarters of a pound of sweet potato. That is where things get challenging. You really, you really just want to make sure you have like a pretty good um, ratio. I have these two sweet potatoes. Honestly, this is probably closer to a pound, but whatever. Um, and then you'll want salt, which I just keep my salt in a little Tic Tac container because I don't have salt and pepper shakers and then the recipe calls for white ground pepper it's really more for like aesthetic reasons so you don't have to buy it if you don't want to cube the potatoes now my dad used to take the skin off of his sweet potatoes um but I didn't the first time because I didn't know and I just never have and it tastes fine it actually adds an interesting texture you probably do want to wash your sweet potatoes they're usually pretty dirty if you want you can wash all of them but you boil them in water so I kind of figure that these are even the little dirt come off um, so you're just going to cube them up into as uniform sized pieces as possible put them in a pan with some cold water I usually just put fill it with like an inch of cold water and then fill it with the potatoes and then fill it from there and um, one suggestion Red skin potatoes are pretty easy to cut, they're pretty small and soft, but sweet potatoes can be a little challenging. So I would suggest, especially if you're not strong, like I'm not, um, I would suggest getting smaller potatoes so that, like this one is going to be easier to cut through than this one is. So let me show you a red skin potato. Alright, so all I'm going to do is just cut it. it and then I will probably cut it again obviously the smaller size pieces you have the quicker they'll cook through I'll get back to you once I have all of these diced up and in my pot all the potatoes are in the pot I fill it so that they're covered with water and it's just them in there and I'll stir it occasionally um I don't know that's what my burner's doing I kind of play it by ear and so what you want to do is bring it up to a simmer um, and then just let them sit. Um, it says until you can pierce them with a fork and you want to make sure sweet potatoes are usually a little harder than the red skin so you just want to make sure you get them all. And like I said you're going to want to stir them. Here let me get a spoon. You'll just want to stir them regularly so that everything's like evenly distributed throughout there and then depending on how many potatoes you have and how hot your water is and how small your pieces are and all that fun stuff it's gonna take probably somewhere between 30 minutes 
in an hour. Freaking. As a side note, don't mind my dishes. Um, I like to keep my butter out, just like get it out and set it out on the counter while I'm waiting for all of this to be done so that it's softer and easier to incorporate into the potatoes when we get to that point. Oh wait, so it's been about 45 minutes and I actually think I ended up cutting my sweet potatoes, some of them a little small because they're kind of falling apart. Um, oh, I don't want to get you too steamy. But if you see, let's go to a sweet potato, it's easily pierced. They're like all like that. And the red skin ones are the same way too. Um, and if you can pierce the side with the skin, then you're probably better off. So I'm going to just turn this off and I'm not going to do this in the camera obviously, but over here is a strainer. So I'm just going to um, drain it and then I'm going to return them to the hot pan. Um, before I put them in the pan, I'll probably put in just a couple slices of the butter. Okay, so the potatoes are back in the pan. I put about half a stick of butter underneath and then the rest of the half on top. And mm, over here I just have my mixer, which is what I like to use. And I have another half a stick of butter cut up. So this would be 12 tablespoons, but this I may end up using, so I have that out. Um, I'm not going to put the salt and pepper in yet. And so you don't want to mix this too much. Like that's always the bane of sweet potato, or of mashed potatoes. So let me go. So you just mix them. And so that's what you're just going to do. And you'll just want to like go around and like push down on the um, chunks to try and break them up. But I need to do this. All right, so I would say these are about half mashed up right now. So now is when I'm going to add the rest of my butter. I'll just chuck all of them there. It calls for two teaspoons of salt and a quarter teaspoon of white um, pepper. I just say do whatever feels right to you, <laughs> um, honestly. I'm normally not that kind of person, but with this because you don't really know how much potato you have in there. It was probably a lot of um, pepper. And what I'm going to do so I don't potentially over mix is I'm going to just go through with my spoon really quick and then start mashing again. Okay, so these are pretty much mixed as well as they should. Now here's where you want to be cautious. So um, you can leave these a little chunkier if you want. If you do that you might want to peel the um, skins though. So now we're at the awkward stage of is it flavored correctly so let me grab a spoon and just try and get a little chunk okay and to me this is super bland i'm gonna add the rest of the stick of butter some more salt and more pepper stir it because the problem is, is you don't want to overbeat it like i said so mix it a little bit and taste again all right so i actually didn't use the mixer again um I just decided to mix with my spoon to see how that incorporated. Right now I'm just waiting for the rest of the butter to melt down. I will say while I'm waiting, something I've done a couple times, if you ever feel like it's a little dry, um, especially, you can put milk in, just add it sparingly, but I've never done that. Instead what I do is I add more butter, but I add it liquefied, like melted. And I do feel like it adds just like a little something because it adds immediate moisture to the potatoes. Try again. I'm just going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. And I have to say that in general, for me, when I'm making these for my family, because I make these for myself as well, I'm definitely more picky when it's for other people. So, let me keep mixing. Okay, so I mix some more, and let's just do this. And here, let me get a chunk with some skin in it to make sure that's fine. You know what? I think that is pretty good. Um... I think the potatoes could be a little bit more flavorful, but sometimes that's just potatoes. And I mean, I could keep adding more salt, but I don't want to overdo it. <clears throat> like I said, this it's the night before Thanksgiving. This is for Thanksgiving. Normally, I would make these the same day, but we are eating at noon. I'm going to let these come down in temperature and then put them in my fridge. Um, I'll taste them again in the morning and see how they taste then if I want to add a little something else. And all I do is I'm going to put it in a crock pot 
and when I get where we're going I will just turn it on low and just stir it periodically and that'll kind of just warm them up a little bit without over drying them out or anything but those are the Disney potatoes they're really really good people always think there's cheese in them not just because of the color but it does kind of taste cheesy but it's not it's just sweet potato and red skin potato so thank you for watching and if you try this or if you've ever had the version at Disney World let me know I've never had it because I've never been in 1900 Park Fair for dinner but it is a goal for me to go and try them and compare them to the ones that we make so thank you so much for watching and have a nice day bye